Hello, welcome to the another class of Digital Design with Veriluck. In today's class, we will discuss uh, designing of counter and use of counter. Let us start with the outline of the today's class. So, counter and we will discuss about asynchronous counter, particularly binary counter, modular counter, counter with uh, up to 0 to 9 or 0 to 6 modular counter. Then we will discuss about synchronous counter, binary counter, modular counter and up down counter. Then we will discuss about register based counter, ring counter and one important or interesting what I can say case study how to design a digital clock, setable digi digital clock with a counter that we will discuss today. Let us start with the plus. So, what is counter? So, counter it simply counts the number. So, just like uh, what uh, the kit counts uh, just like 0 to 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In general, whenever we say in English, we say 1, 2, 3, 4, but we include 0 also. So, in uh, computer domain or C language domain or any standard domains, we include 0 also. 4 bit counter means it is count from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, it signifies this is 0 and this signifies 15. So, with 4 bit counter we can count from 0 to 15 and whenever it is a simple counter then it is a count from 0 to 15 and repeat. Other optional functions and variations may be start count at specific point, maybe you can start from 5, say from 5, okay, 5 to 15 and then repeat. Stop count at specific point, say at 9, so count start from 0, start from 0 and go up to 9 and do not stop at 9, but repeat the same thing. So, again start with 0. So, 0 to 9 and repeats, count only even numbers. So, 0, 2, 4, count even numbers. So, count only odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 15, count specific number in specific order and repeat. This is a more generic one, 1, 9, this is 1, 9, 4, 6, 7, 8, 3. Then this sequence, whatever this sequence we are repeating. So, this is a count specific number in specific order and repeat. So, this is also another count, kind of counter. So, mostly whenever we say counter, counter is a mostly 4 bit counter. So, it count from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 and repeats. Up counter, it is basically the same thing. Whenever you say down counters, it is start count from 1, 1, 1, 1 to down to 0, 0, 0, 0. That means, it count start from 15 and goes up to 0 and again it start from 15 to 0. This things repeats. So, this things, uh, this things repeats. Modern counter, mod 10 counter example. So, it count up to 0 to 9 and repeats as a particular decimal counter we can say, digit counter. Mod 6 counter, so it is uh, start from 0 and goes up to 5. That means, it do not touch 6, it goes up to 5 and it repeats. And this mod 6 counter and mod 10 counter is more popular in our digital clock. So, we use uh, suppose minute or second, second goes up to 60. So, for one digit we can go up to 10 and another digit we can go up to 6. That means, here 9 and here 5. So, 59 and in our minute or second counter it start from 0 and goes up to 59. So, how to design a simple counter? If you look at uh, given some flip flop, how to design simple counter? What we want? So, this uh, right side tables it shows. So, what we want? So, this is a uh, uh, suppose uh, Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. So, if you count then what it should happens. So, initially it is 0, 0, 0 and the next clock it should be 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In this sequence it should go. So, that means, so this is the output we, we want and from this table we can say that uh, Q0 change every time, Q0 change every time, it toggle every time, it toggle every time and Q1, 
q1 change in two times. So, every two times changes. So, here if you look at every two times it changes here, every two times it changes here, every two times it changes here. This is the change point, this is the change point. Q2 change every four times. So, if you look at this four times, Q2 change at this point, here it changes. So, similarly, Q3 change every eight times. So, from this uh, pattern, so this changing pattern can be model. So, if you look at Q0, Q1 and Q2 change can be model because we know the pattern. So, Q0 can be model using a T flip flop, every clock it toggles and Q1 in term of Q0 because we know means uh, Q1 toggle after 0, 1, okay, after 2 pulse of Q0 it changes. That means, we can model Q1 in term of Q0. So, in term of Q0 and T flip flop we can model Q1. So, similarly Q2 can be modeled in term of Q1 and a T flip flop. So, let us see how we can design. So, I am showing one circuit here. So, this is a initial thing is a what we earlier said is Q0 can be modeled with a T flip flop okay. and Q1 can be modeled with a T flip flop with along with Q0. So, in this case two things we are adding. So, Q0, Q1 is function of T flip flop, one T flip flop and earlier state and uh, Q0. Uh, similarly for this, similarly for this. This uh, we have arranged the circuit in this way. So, Q0 output is fed to Q1 clock, then Q1 output is fed to the Q2 clock. Similarly, Q2 output fed to the this is flip flop 3 clock. Okay. So, does this circuit solve our purpose? Because what we model, so earlier slide what we model, so this thing Q0 can be modeled using a T flip flop, Q1 can be modeled in term of Q0 and a T flip flop. Based on simplicity, we have simply arranged the flip flops, 4 flip flops. Q0 we have given directly input, okay, directly input clock and for Q1 we have given means uh, Q0 input as clock. Let us see whether it is really work or not. Based on other English descriptions uh, we have given this thing and suppose this clock goes this is the at every positive edge whenever it changes from 0 to 1 this is the positive edge okay, positive edge. So, it changes the states. So, whether it really do or not let us see. So, initially let us assume all the values of q0, q1, q2 and q3 to be 0. So, initially suppose if you assume all values are 0 then what will happen in the next clock because clock initially everything is 0. So, here clock is also 0 and here this value is also 0. Suppose whenever we clock changes then this guy will change to 1 because t is equal to 1 that means q0 change to 1. Whenever q0 change from 0 to 1, it is actually a positive edge treasure. So, here also it is a positive edge treasure. That means, at the same time this guy also change, this guy change, this guy change and this guy change. Initially we put what value 0, 0, 0 initially assume and it all the values change to 1, 1, 1, 1. That means, initially this is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 and immediately it reached to 1, 1, 1, 1. So, we did what we do not want actually. That means, this circuit is not as we want and what value we are getting. So, initially it is uh, 1, 1, 1, 1 then what we are getting. So, this is uh, after this it is changing to at this uh, thing it is changing to 0, 1, 1, 1 because here we are not getting any positive edge treasure from the earlier flip flops. So, here we are getting this thing then it changed to 1, 1, 0, 1. So, if you look at this thing this is 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So, what it is doing actually counting reversely. So, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 it is counting 
and reverse order. We want that actually increasing order, but it is counting in decreasing order. So, that we do not want in this case. We want that increasing order, but we got decreasing order. That means, uh, if it is a simple increasing things we want and it is doing decreasing order, then simply just complement the clock. That will work definitely. Let us see whether it work or not. And if you use these things, then there is a problem because it is not doing uh, increasing order, counting increasing order. We want it should count in increasing order, it is doing in decreasing order. So, simple what we have done, then earlier case we connected this to this clock is connected from Q0. Only thing is we want to make it decreasing. So, simple what we are doing is instead of taking from Q0, we are taking from Q0 complements, we are taking Q0 complement and giving to the clock. For this case also same thing we are doing, for this case also we are doing the same thing. So, instead of taking from Q0, Q1, Q2, we are taking from Q0 dex, Q1 dex and Q2 dex, whether this will work or not. Let us see and this is uh, for clock and clock will work at rising edge. So, this is the rising edge, all the rising edge, positive edge and for this thing. So, for Q0, it is doing at rising edge and because this is we are taking from Q dex, it should work for falling edge because this is now Q dex. This means falling edge Q0, whenever Q0 falling edge, it will get converted into rising edge because we are taking from complemented output. Q is, this is Q is falling edge, that means Q bar will be rising edge. That means this T flip flop, flip flop will be activated when this Q bar will be rising edge. That means Q need to be falling edge. So, that means here it will be activated instead of this. It will not activate it here, but it will activate here and that we want. Actually, if you do this thing, how, how it is behaving? So, Q0 every clock cycle it is changing. Okay, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, every clock cycle it is changing. That means, at this point it is changing, every clock change happening. And what Q1 want? Every two times, every two times whenever this Q0 changes, we want a change. That means, this is two time and here is change happening. For this two, here change happening. Okay. So, every two time its change is happening, here two times it is changing happening, here two times changing happening, whatever we want we are getting. For this case also every two times change happening, every two times this change happening. That means, now what we wanted it is doing. So, what it is really doing? For Q3 also it is do the same thing, every two time Q2 changes, this is 0 and 1, every two time it changes, it is changing from 0 to 1. That means, what we wanted is happening and what the value is getting? This is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it is counting in increasing order and this circuit behaving the way we want. That means, whatever we want to design a counter, we are able to design using a 4 counter with 4 T flip flop. And how we can write a Verilog code for this? So, this is a we need to use 4 T flip flop and this code is, uh, I am showing this code, this code is for, this is positive edge riser T flip flop and this have actually 2, this module have actually 4 inputs. Put means, uh, 3 input and 1 output. So, one is this is uh, output and this is uh, input clock reset T and Q is output and whenever this is a kind of a asynchronous uh, reset at positive edge of RST, if RST then reset to 0 and this one is uh, every if uh, RST, if not RST then if t, that means if uh, t input is 1, then you do toggle the things, otherwise 
you return the earlier state. This is the standard uh, design of a uh, Verilog design for T flip flop. And based on this, using the same modules, we are instantiating four T flip flop to update the count. And this one is actually Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. This is actually Q3, Q2, Q1, and Q0 format. So, this is the MSB format and this is LSB format. This is the LSB side and this is the MSB side. And if you look at, so whatever output of Q0, complemented output, we are giving edge clock. This is also complemented output. So, complemented output are giving edge clock. And you can reset at any moment now if you make it reset is equal to 1. And this is the Verilog code for 4 bit counter. And the Verilog code for 4 bit counter, complete test bench we are also showing here. So, in this case, uh, we are declaring some uh, words. So, where we will receive the output and this is clock and RST we are giving and T we are giving as input to the our counter. This is where instantiating the counter. Insta it have actually clock, T, reset and this is the output value. So, we are providing T, RST, clock and in part 1, this is clock is changing. This is the part 1 code, clock is changing every 5 seconds and this is part 2, what we are doing? Initially, we are initializing to dump the BCD file, value code dump file to a r.counter.bcd and we are dumping all variables and here initially we are making reset is equal to 0, then t is equal to 1 Okay, and after some times we are making reset is equal to 1. That means initially reset is equal to 0, after some times reset is equal to 1 and after some times reset is equal to 0. That means at this period the counter will get reset to 0 and then it start counting because after that we are resetting after 185 second. That means let counter do the count and in this part we are simply monitoring all the at every time instance, every changes time instance, we are monitoring RST, reset clock T and output Q and this Q we are monitoring as integer values. And if you run the code using iVerilog, so and using it can generate a BCD files and you can see using GTK wave and this is this picture shows the waveform. GTK web waveforms of the counter and if you can see clearly, so initially reset values at this point we are resetting the things. Before that value of output, value of counter is unknown x and whenever you are giving reset value at this point value of counter get reset to 0 and from that point after that we are keeping the reset value as 0. Okay, this one is we are resetting reset value 1 at this time counter value reset to 0 and after that we are putting reset value is equal to 0 that means do not do reset further let us counter do its work. Then here this point counter do the counting and if you look at the things it is counting from 0 to 15 f, 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 f is 15 and this is uh, 9 this is 10. So, every time it is counting and so 0 to 15. And again after 15 it started counting 0, 1, 2, 3 and here we have put reset is equal to 1. That means again it is after 2 here we have put the reset signal. So, it started again as 0 and this is the zoomed value. This one is zoomed value of uh, up to 0 to 8 and if you look at at this point the whenever reset value started this reset to 0 and then it is counting every rising edge of clock, every rising edge of clock it is counting. And here same things, this part we are showing, so particularly from A, from this part we are showing, zoomly, and here we are putting reset at this point. And at this point, it counted up to 2 and after receiving the reset signals, it counter by reset to 0. So, we are showing this Verilog code, we can download the Verilog code from our websites and you can run using iVerilog and you can see the waveform, how, how it is changing. You can modify the code also. Let us look at a asynchronous counter with mod numbers less than 2 to the power n. So, earlier case uh, 4 bit counter, it count up to 15. 
okay, 1 to 16 or 0 to 15. So, if it is less than 2 to the n, particularly extended counter with the, suppose take example mod 6 counter, suppose we want to count from 0, 1, 2, 3 up to 4 and whenever it reaches 6, it should reset. That means, uh, we want to count from 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and again it should reset, then again it should do. So, in this sequence it should do and we want to reset whenever it reaches more than 5, whenever it is attempt to 6, it should get reset. Okay. So, what we are doing is, it is counting, if you look at this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 5 okay. and whenever it is try to go for 6, it is resetting to 0. Okay. So, this is how we can design counter. So, we can use asynchronous reset function of t flip flop to reset the value of q. So, here, so all the this clear particularly clear or reset of flip flop we can use it. So, what we are doing whenever q1 and q2 equal to 1 that means, it is 3 bit counter and whenever q1 and q2 is equal to 1 that means, it is 1 1 0. So, that means, this is uh, if it is 1 and this is 1 and this is 0 we do not require to take whenever this thing, this thing is 1 1 that means, it reaches to 6 whenever this thing goes to 1 1 that means, q 1 is equal to 1 and q 2 is equal to 1 we are resetting the all 3 flip flop that means, whenever the counter reaches 6 it is resetting. So, here so here if you look at the things it is going up to 5 and whenever it touches 6 immediately after touching 6 it resets and we are using asynchronous reset. Okay. So, mod 6 counter produced by clearing a binary mod 8 counter when the count touches 6. Okay, whenever the count touch 6, then simply reset it and if the resetting time is very less, then it will not be visible. Let us see means how we can design a asynchronous mod 6 counter with very log code. This is exactly same design, we are not doing anything. So, except here you are using 3 flip flop instead of 4 flip flop in earlier cases, 3 flip flop same this is a in, means a clock input from the t flip flop 1. Okay, and this is the clock input for the t flip flop, this is the similar thing and what we are doing is the reset signals, this reset signals, the earlier case this particularly this reset signals, this reset signals we are getting from are you able to see this thing, this reset signals after 1 second delay. So, flip flop reset signal is equal to external reset or if q 2 and q 1 q 2 and q 1 equal to 1. If this condition is true, then you reset the flip flop either external reset, this is external reset or this condition that means, this will check for 110. That means, 0 may not be required to check, but at least 11. So, q 2 is equal to 1 and q 1 is equal to 1. If it is 0, then it is 6 and if it is 1, it is 7. So, we do not need to care because 7 is higher than that. Okay. If it is 1, if it is 0. So, we do not need to care. If it is q 2 and q 1 is equal to 1, it generate a reset signal and it make it 0. And the same uh, similar kind of uh, test bench we are writing, this is part 1 where clock is changing every 5 seconds. Here dumping the all variables in this file and what we are doing initially RST is equal to 0 and T is equal to 1 and at 10 second RST is equal to 1 and we are doing RST is equal to 0 then it start counting that means, this is uh, and here up to 100 seconds from 10 to 100 this 100 seconds it is count every 10 seconds. Okay. So, that we want and at whenever it reaches 6 is after 1 second it should reset. So, because 
in our flip flop design we have put a assign has one this thing that means flip flop reset after one second after reaching the value 6. Let us see in the waveform whether it is happening or not and clearly you are able to see this is the whole waveform okay and this is the counting. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 I are able to see here there is a after 5 it is going to 0 and if you zoom it this is the zoomed versions this one is zoomed versions and if you zoom view from 60 second to 80 seconds what happening. So, 4, 5 here at this point it is touching 6 and after touching 6 per 1 second 1 second because we have put delay 1 second in flip flop after touching 6 for 1 second it is resetting the whole counter that means all 3 flip flop getting reset to 0 and what we wanted for 1 second the counter became 6 if you look at for 1 second counter became 6 and get reset to 0. So, we have put 1 second if you put very less suppose uh, maybe uh, 0.1 second or very minimal thing then less than 10 percent of cycle then it will do within that period. But value will not change value will not change unless it encounter another value will not change unless it encounter another positive rising is rising is. So, value will continue in this period value will continue and if this value is this delay is very small then it will not be visible. So, clearly in this diagrams in this bigger diagram this delay is not visible that means whatever we wanted we got it this is design of mod 6 counter and this is a design of mod 10 counter similar philosophy. So, what is mod 10 counter? So, earlier it was a whenever mod 10 mod 10 means it can go up to 0 to 9 and whenever it 1001 happens that means this is 1001 this is 9 ok. So, the counter produced this is a this thing and whenever this is 9 and 1010 0, 1, 0, this is the value of 10 that means 1010 0, 1, 0 means 1010 this is q0 q1 q2 and q3. So, clearly q3 and q1 if q3 q1 is equal to 1 1 then just reset it. So, here also what you are doing is you are taking q1 you are taking q3 and whenever this two value is equal to 1 1 simply reset all the t flip flop. So, mod 10 counter produced by clearing a mod 16 binary counter when count touch 1010. One, whenever this q3 q1 become 1 1 simply reset the counter and this will result a mod 10 counter or we can say mod 10 whenever you say it is a BCD binary coded decimal counter. Mod 6 counter is mod 6 we say but whenever you say mod 10 it is a uh, goes up to 0 to 9 and in BCD binary coded decimal in decimal numbers the number goes up to every digit goes up from 0 to 9 every digit goes from 0 to 9 in binary or in hexadecimal every digit goes from 0 to 15 because uh, after 10 we represent using a b c d e f 4 bit binary counter, but in mod 10 it goes up to 9. So, how we can design a decade counter this is a decade means a uh, uh, first digit this is first digit and this is 10th digit and this is 100 digits. Suppose uh, decade counter means up to 100 ok. So, you count. So, this is a uh, what you can say suppose uh, 298 suppose this value need to be 8 this value need to be 9 and this is this is a 29 is a decade a part of decade counter this counter one decade. So, it can count up to means uh, 0 0 0 to 999. So, it can be designed using a BCD counter 3 BCD counter and we can attach 3 
seven segment display to count the ticket counter very simplistic way so in um, railway stations or airport we see this kind of clock so synchronous clock where it display with the uh, uh, bigger lights so ripple counter using deep flip flop whatever uh, we studied the similar thing ripple counter we can design using deep flip flop also so what we are doing so in this case this uh, in deep flip flop this is output of uh, this deep flip flop q bar output we are giving to the input to d that means every time it changes okay every time it changes and this clock what is this clock we are giving to negative edge treasure deep flip flop and every time this q bar output we are giving to the d that means this clock changes after every means this one changes every time this one changes every times this one every two times this is a uh, every four time and this is changes every eight times because this things you judge clock this thing you judge clock this thing you judge clock because this is cascaded clock it uh, divide the frequency so if if this is work every one time that means every this thing ev worked every two times means uh, every two time initial clock and this is every four time initial clock and every eighth time initial clocks that means uh, it divide the frequency by 2 4 and 8 okay suppose uh, this flip flop toggles means uh, every clock so this is half of the clock this is 1/4 of the clock okay 1/4 time means that means every four clock it toggles okay here every eight clock it toggles okay so binary counter easy to design using either t flip flop or d flip flop it is very easy to design is there any issue with this and eps what is the issues if you look at we are giving clock from one flip flop to another flip flop what is the supposed to be synchronous whenever clock means it should be synchronous and we are playing with clock and that is one of the most important demerit of the asynchronous counter this ripple counter ripple means flowing from uh, left most bit to right most bit from one flip flop to another flip flop this clock value flows from one value to another okay similarly the value also get flows that's why it is called ripple counter asynchronous ripple counter okay so the demerit whatever i said the demerit is it is uh, not clock is uh, not proper what not uh, giving as clock as proper clock A clock is getting cascaded first thing we don't play with clock make changes to the circuit but don't play with clock so this is the most important demerit of the design okay if you play with clock then for larger design it will not work for smaller design for smaller purpose it's fine but for whenever you going for larger design in a big system we should not play with clock so flip flop are not synchronized in this case in ripple counter particularly flip flop are not synchronized and nowadays almost everywhere are getting synchronized wall clock even in railway stations sync clock with network time anyhow we are not doing with uh, means network time protocol but we are designing at least very simplistic uh, counter synchronous counter and in your particularly in a smart mobile we can actually sync uh, in network protocol so nowadays our mobile have actually synchronized time railway or airport clocks are all synchronized time nowadays no one use stand alone one so we should forget about the stand alone thing so it's everything should be synchronized so that's a ripple carry counter particularly it is not synchronized one clock is fed to the one clock from one flip flop is fed to the another flip flop okay output of another flip flop is fed as clock to another flip flop that means we are playing with clock that's not good okay and this is similar to what i give example in really in regular classes so problem with ripple counter suppose a student copy solution from student b with some error and again student c copies from student b with some error and this thing continue and if there are suppose 26 students are there are 30 students are there that means error will multiplies 
what will be the solutions of z so it will solution for 26 time error this is called communication gap okay and hence what we conclude is all flip flops should take same clock instead of the cascading clock instead of cascading clock we should keep same clock to every flip flop okay so clearly what we want this is actually initial clock from this we generate the clock uh, from here generate the clock from here we generate the clock so this is actually wrong design we should not do this thing clock is applied to flip flop 0 it propagates through flip flop n that means the clock is propagating from one flip flop to another flip flop and change state from qi minus 1 is used to toggle qi okay so because this clock is getting modified if the propagation delay of each flip flop is higher then after some time what will happens clock will not look like clock okay so it will be a properly skewed version of clock which is not good what we do not want so ripple carry counter so worst case setting so the clock skew may be n into propagation delay of flip flop where TPD is propagation delay of flip flop. So, in ripple counter, suppose you are doing a very big counter, not 4 bit counter, 8 bit counter, you are doing for a very n bit counter. For n bit counter, this will be very difficult to manage with means uh, this ripple carry clock, which is not good. Okay and ripple carry counter so ultimately if you show in the diagram so this is for first clock okay this is for q0 q1 and after some clocks you can see the output is changing after some times for q3 here output is changing it is not visible but for q1 it is visible for q2 it is uh, okay for q3 it is actually we are able to see around 5 to 10 percent of clock is reduced. That means, if you design a very big clock, okay, so means uh, what I can say uh, 16 bit or 32 bit asynchronous ripple counter, then clock will means uh, skewed, which is not good, we do not want that. And how to do? So, let us we will see, but uh, before going to that. Let us look at the how to design code for 4 bit counter flip flop with propagation delay. Let us put propagation delay and see how it is behaving. Okay, this is what we are putting is uh, uh, instead of uh, in this flip flop design, say so in earlier case, we designed the flip flop without the propagation delay, but here intentionally we added the propagation delay. So, every clock, so it is whenever it changes, it add a delay one second and then it do. So, to see the once what I can say effect of this propagation delay we have added this delay. Let us see what is happening. Okay. So, you can see the clock will behave similar to this. Okay. So, you can see that thing. Okay. Let us come back to the synchronous counter. What is synchronous counter? Instead of giving feeding clock to first flip flop and after that output will be fed to clock h clock as second output of second flip flop will be fed as clock of third flip flop that we do not do. So, in this case we will put same clock to all flip flop. So, one single clock to all flip flop need to design add circuit to make it synchronous. How to design extra circuit? Same we should look from the same stable Okay, so the earlier for the characteristic table of counter, and from that we can design the what extra circuitry we need. So if you look at same circuitry, so this thing already we have model. So Q0 change every time, Q1 change when Q0 changes, okay, and Q2 changes when Q0 and Q1 changes, okay, and Q3 changes when Q1 changes. Q1 have 1, Q0 1, Q1 1, Q2 1. Whenever all 
3 bit changes than only 8 changes. Okay. That means clearly you can say q1 changes when q0 is equal to 1 and similarly this thing when q2 changes this thing whenever this changes happen whenever this q1 and q0 is equal to 1. Similarly, at this point whenever all 3 q2, q1 and q0 is equal to 1 at this time q3 will change. That means we can model this thing and if you look at this is depend on q0, this will depend upon q0 and q1, this is q0, q1 this is, and this one is uh, q0, q1 and q2, this is end, this is only q0 and this is every time, this is depend on only clock. So, this is already model, so that is why not to use directly. So, we can do this one is directly whenever you are fitting, we are fitting this thing and now we can see clock is going to every flip flop, clock is going to every flip flop, clock is going to every flip flop and when it is changing, whenever negative edge treasure, this one is negative edge treasure, we are making not positive edge treasure but negative edge treasure, whenever this one is changed, q1 is equal to q0 is equal to 1 then it change to value get changed to 1 0 that means q1 change that means q1 change 1 q0 is equal to 1. So, in this case q2 change q2 change total counter become 1 0 that means q2 change from 0 to 1 1 q1 and q0 equal to 1 1 and similarly for this also it happens ok that means this is 7 and this one is 8 this one is q3 become 1 this last guy and how can design circuit here directly we are feeding the this thing t is equal to here t is equal to direct q0 so this is a this t is equal to q0 and this one is what we are taking is q0 and q1 so this one is actually q0 q1 this one is q0 q1 and this one is clearly you can see q2 q1 and q0 so all three these things this is actually q1 q0 and ended with q2 now it is ended with q2 so in this way you can generate this thing in this case straightforward we can uh, here three input and gate averaging without using three input and gate also if you take directly then you can get it with two input also but this will make more less delay and how you can do the Verilog code for 4 bit synchronous counter. So, imp, same thing. So, this is uh, T values, T value earlier we are giving to clock. Now, clock is same for all flip flop, clock is same for all flip flop. Only thing is T value are changing, T value are changing. We are changing the T values, input T value is getting changed. Okay. So, this is a very low code for 4 bit synchronous counter. We can design binary counter, binary op counter. So, suppose uh, this op is 1, then only it will count op, otherwise it will not count. Suppose this will make it 0. If you make it, this value is 0, suppose this, this value is make it at 0. So, then because this is 0, this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 0. That means, everywhere input t will be 0. So, we know whenever input t, t flip flop, whenever input t is 0, then it retain the older state, it retain the older state. Suppose this counter value is 6 and if t value is 0 for uh, all the places, then it retain the older places, it do not do the things. So, whatever the value is there, it retains. If it is 1, then at this place, t is equal to, if t is equal to 1, then this values get output of this q get ended, output of this value get transferred, output of this value get transferred. If op value is 1, then only output of 1 get transferred to the another. So, in this way we can design a controllable op counter. So, we can design down counter instead of taking from q, you take from q dex. 
here also instead of taking from q take from q dex this is a down counter binary down counter you can analyze and see it is it can do down counting and if you look at you can design a up down counter we can mix both the things and in that case what you are doing is actually every places if you look at the circuit so this is a if suppose this is 1 this is 1 means what will happens so this will make 0 this will make 1 okay if this is make 1 that means this will make 1 and this circuit this is this make 1 that means this will be activated that means this circuit will functions this will be activated okay so that means all the places from the this this output will go to the next guy output will go to the next guy this guy will be activated this guy will be activated if it is 1 if it is 0 then suppose this is this one is 0 then this will be 1 this will be 0 that means this will be 0 if it is 0 then what will happens so this guy will be activated now this guy will be activated this guy will be activated this guy will be activated whenever this guy will be activated this data will come from this place that means it will do instead of if it is 0 from one flip flop q output it will go to the next flip flop if up is up down signal is 1 if up down signal is 0 then the complemented output will go so for up down is equal to 0 it will do down counting if it is uh, up down is equal to 1 then it will do up counting and clearly you can see this part is a actually a multiplexer this is q q bar and this is multiplexer and this is up down signals this one is up down signals and this is fading to the q this is the fading to the q and you can see next diagram so what we are doing actually we are setting one okay and here up down signals okay so here if it is up then what it will go so it will take this if it is up if it is one then it will take this one it will make it one okay and then it will take data from here one it will take data from q if it is one that means this select line is one then it will take from q this will take from q if it is zero the multiplexer take data from the complemented output that means q dex so in this way so whatever earlier we have designed up down counter can be re-implemented using multiplexer very very nicely okay and counter based on shift register suppose we have already read shift register in the last classes so shift register based counters means one hour shifting suppose this is a initial value is 100 then you shift one bit shift one bit shift right one bit then you will get this thing and this thing continues this is counter based on shift register you can do so suppose 1100 is there and we shift it so here every time only one one is there in this case every time if you look at this is 2121 one. so if you do it then it will be 11 one, one. so it will be there will be 2 1 will be there every time 2 1 because you are doing with circular shift okay and this can be designed with simple four flip flop circularly connected and you place the value initially and the circulate so counter can be designed based on the shift register also so let us look at very interesting thing so how we can design a wall clock so everyone use a, a wall clock or wrist page wrist watch so given a 256 megahertz clock okay of course and other digital components as usual multiplexer decoder and other things can you design a clock so this one is actually if you look at this is a push button switch okay so this two are push button switch so uh, suppose this kind of two buttons are let us describe about this suppose uh, there are two buttons are given so to display time in hour minute and second format there are three means uh, or six uh, LEDs are there seven segment LEDs are should support reset and adjust of time of switches button one select mode counter and button two for increasing the mode counter so whether you are increasing so one button is selecting what mode okay and second button is used for means keeping the counter suppose you are putting means uh, 
s is equal to 1. So, the, suppose uh, this you have selected the second, then the second value will start increasing. Suppose it is earlier it was 60, 58, then 59, then 0, 1, 2, it count in increment order. So, how it can do? So, in this case we can design like this, okay. So, this is a uh, wall clock design whatever based on our descriptions. So, design a wall clock to display time in HH, MM and SS format should support reset and adjust of time. Button 1 for select more counter and button 2 for increase in the select more counter. So, if you look at this is actually mod 60 counter. This one is actually mod 60 counter. This is for second, this is for minute and this is for hour. Okay, this is mod 24 counter because uh, in a day 24 hours, so mod 24, 24 hours, mod 24 counter, mod 60 counter and mod 60 counter and we can select. Suppose you choose select, this button is used for normal operations, selecting what you can say selecting second, minute and hour, we can select whether it will work on normal operations or we are selecting any one of this. So, that can be done and here every time if anything, if it is not in normal operation, if you are selecting any one then that counter will go up based on the pulse whatever are putting pulse up pulse and if you do this thing then how it happens. Suppose counter is equal to 0, 0 then if you look at, so this red part get activated, red part get activated and we are taking input from mod 256 counter, 256 hertz clock that means here we are getting 1 second pulse and this 1 second pulse get in inputted to the mod 60 counter. That means, every 1 second we are getting a 1 pulse. What it means? That means, every 1 second this second counter will be incremented. After this, after 60 second the output of this mod 60 counter given to the minute counter. Every 60 second this get a 1 pulse. That means, every 60 seconds minute get incremented and in this case every 60 minute this counter get incremented. This is the normal operation of clock and whenever this is 0, 0, clock will do it normal operations and this is for 1. This if we do then if you look at only this part will be activated, this part, not this part, only this part, not this part, not this part, only this part. If you put press button then this value will go and this will that means from up button from this button you can put press 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 you can do and you can increment the second counter this mod 60 first counter you can set the value of second. So, if the mod counter is equal to 1 0 then clearly you can see only this part will be activated this part this part is activated that means you are able to set or you are able to set the value of minute as you want by pressing this up buttons continuously. You can set the value of minute similarly for this also we can do. In the next slides what we are doing is uh, we are able to set for this counter because this is 1 that means this goes and this is uh, this mox is get selected okay because of that thing so this mox is selected and here you are getting this counter we can set and we are able to design a digital clock with this mod 6 mod 60 mod 24 counters and some 2 cross port decoder and some select switch and 256 mod counter with this we can uh, we are able to design a very nice clock. So, that is why means uh, designing counter have some usefulness. Okay. Uh, in the next class we looked at from the different point of view how to design counter, register, flip flop because all the flip flop counter register are sequential element. How can you do the design formally? Till now we have designed as it is kind of thing. So, without having I mean, proper formalisms. So, from the next class we will try to look at from the formalism point of view. As we know every combinational circuits can be modeled using 
Boolean algebra. Similarly, for sequential circuit also, every sequential circuit, register, counter, flip flop, every things can be modeled using finite state machines. So, in the next class, we will try to model the sequential circuit using finite state machines. Thank you. Mm -hmm.